Hey everyone, uh, my name is Parinita Rahi. I am a principal PM lead in the AI frameworks team within Microsoft. And um, I don't have a history lesson on PyTorch to give because I've just been involved with the community uh, a year back, but what a year, right? I mean, if we talk about um, the um, AI landscape, um, a lot was already covered in the previous talk, but there's so much game-changing work that's happening around us, and all is powered by PyTorch in the back end. And so a fantastic year, um, and, and we at Microsoft like, have been part of this journey early on, collaborating with Meta uh, in the nascent stages of PyTorch, and now uh, with the Linux Foundation, and are so happy to be um, a part of this community. Um, so as we talk about this AI landscape, and if you remember the chart from the previous talk, um, one thing that's changing is the complexity of these models, right? Uh, GPT-3, uh, 175 billion parameters. GPT-2 was, I think, uh, 100 times smaller. GPT-4, even more. So, you know, complexity of this data is increasing. The amount of data that these models are getting trained on is increasing. And so organizations that are using uh, uh, or building uh, these models have uh, a problem at hand in terms of how do we handle this and you know, how do we do it efficiently and in an agile fashion because you know, uh, there's rapid innovation happening. We've had like a slew of innovations just at Microsoft across uh, you know, various uh, products that, uh, and cloud-based solutions that we have, uh, be it uh, ChatGPT, uh, Bing-based solutions, um, Office, um, you know, Copilot, uh, GitHub Copilot, and so on. So a lot of these parameters um, and, and, you know, the data model complexity requires time commitment. So how do organizations scale up and, and perform these tasks efficiently um, and also responsibly? Uh, because it's not just that we want to output a model for uh, product uh, innovation, but we want to make sure that uh, these models are built in, in the right way and are, you know, serving society broadly and not narrowly. So there are a couple of aspects that I'm going to cover in uh, my talk today. Uh, the first one, uh, you know, how do we, if, if you are, you know, a business owner, a data scientist, or an IT department lead, if you are posed with the question of your, how do I train state-of-the-art uh, state models that are applicable to my organization, one of the tools that we provide within Azure um, uh, is uh, pre-built environments, and I'll talk about more uh, later in terms of how we build them specifically for PyTorch as well. Um, another question would be, how do I innovate fast? You know, training times are longer. We, you know, there are deadlines that everybody is working with. Uh, you know, how do I make my, equip my scientists and researchers to do it fast? Uh, we offer a bunch of training optimization techniques built on the PyTorch community, uh, as well as like open source uh, uh, accelerators that I'll cover um, in the coming slides. Um, I have a model, but I want to make it small enough because I want to deploy it on an edge device or you know, I have limited GPU resources. How can we use Onyx Runtime to do faster inference? And then finally, you know, as these organizations are building these models, you have to make sure they're secure, compliant, ethical, so how do I make sure that I integrate an audit trail uh, for these models that I develop? So I'll cover the aspect of responsible AI in my slides. Um, so deep learning on Azure, I think um, we have um, a pretty comprehensive and a trusted platform for building intelligent enterprise-based solutions. Um, you can have, um, you know, you have responsible AI tools that are integrated, as well as, you know, frameworks of choice that are integrated, um, and it's all um, powered by flexible compute and capacity with GPUs um, at scale, like the A100s and V100s from NVIDIA. And there are four pillars uh, that we kind of um, bundle our value prop within Azure ML. First is to improve time to value with rapid innovation and integrated tools. Um, second is to operationalize at scale with MLOps. Uh, third is to develop on a secure, hybrid, and compliant platform. 
and fourth is to uh, deliver responsible solutions. And we have seen both startups and seasoned customers benefit from it. So Fashable was like an AI-based fashion startup that uses our curated environments so that the researchers can focus on the task of building these models and not so much of the interdependencies between the various packages and libraries. Uh, BMW realized time savings for the training on, of their image models with just a few clicks. Um, PepsiCo was also able to improve their model accuracy back to um, 40% uh, while still meeting their compliance needs. And um, Ernst & Young, uh, they build um, models that predict loan decisions, and so it was able to improve uh, their, uh, or reduce their disparity uh, between men and women from 7% to 0.5% when they make these uh, loan decisions. So all of these are examples of how um, the tooling that we have at um, Azure and ML um, help um, meet our customers' objectives. So we're at the PyTorch conference, um, and um, why do we love PyTorch on Azure? Um, PyTorch as a framework aligns very well with our goal of uh, making end-to-end -end model development seamless for our users. Um, it's widely accessible. You know, the Python interface makes it very intuitive and easy for users to um, build, uh, build their models. We've seen rapid development uh, technologies and functions that, that help um, developers, um, you know, uh, build out these models uh, faster. Um, as well as, you know, we've been part of a strong ecosystem right from the start. So PyTorch is very critical to our growth. But how do we make it even better? And so these are some of the principles that we try and apply to, um, to make PyTorch work even better on Azure. So first is performance. Uh, we improve uh, performance of PyTorch through systemic high leverage improvements. Um, and I'll talk about some of those later. Uh, the second is that we want to engage the largest production-ready um, PyTorch models at scale and also provide portability. Like, uh, you should be able to take your models and deploy it across all computing platforms that can be leveraged for AI. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, developer productivity. And we want to do this while, while you know, uh, building uh, leadership on the open source community. So how does PyTorch work on Azure? This is a quick uh, kind of a summary slide, but uh, it, this is not just one way. This is, uh, this is like just an explanation of uh, what I'll, I'll be talking about more in detail, which is the Azure container for PyTorch. So at the bottom layer, you see um, the hardware stack, which is powered by um, the best-in-class um, NVIDIA GPUs, um, like the A100s, H100s, and more. And then on top of it, we have multiple ways in which a developer can come in and build their training workflows. So you have the Azure ML SDK, you have the CLI and the Studio, and you can access or build your training jobs using any of these. And then um, within uh, AML, we provide comprehensive training frameworks. And uh, this framework uh, is packaged uh, in what we call the Azure Container for PyTorch, which is a curated environment. And um, I'll speak more about it later, but it has the latest and greatest technology that is required for faster innovation of your ML models. And then on top of it, users can easily plug in their scripts and, and then specify their compute targets uh, to create uh, their models. And then you, know, you can then further deploy it um, and convert it into Onyx for faster inferencing. And so and, and it allows you a, a common place where you can monitor and run these like repeatedly. And you can also share what, your training jobs, your models across all of the researchers and scientists within your organization. So what is ACPT? ACPT is an optimized training framework. And the primary goal there is that when uh, uh, an ML engineer is starting to uh, build their ML models, they don't have to worry about setup time. How can I make it easy for someone to start off and use the best and the most recent um, technology that's available um, to get going? So like, you know, PyTorch versions keep getting updated every time. How do I make sure that somebody has the most recent? Onyx Runtime got a new package out. How do I make sure that they have the recent and it's used kind of consistently across all of the developers in your team? Um, 
And um, check one, two. Sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. And um, as well as we also kind of provide it as a common place to package a lot of the open source uh, training optimization technology that Microsoft uh, participates in and provides, as well as like the native integration in, with Azure makes it easy for you to like um, monitor and deploy your models, as well as like share uh, across your organization. So with ACPT, uh, we now have PyTorch 2.0 included. Uh, Meta announced, or sorry, the PyTorch Foundation announced ACPT in March 5th, on March 15th. And uh, the Azure container for PyTorch released within a week, including this latest package. Um, PyTorch 2.0 is accelerated, it's fast, and it runs uh, large training jobs efficiently. And one of the good things about I mean, the Torch compile uh, is the main API for PyTorch 2.0, which wraps your model and returns a comp compiled model, and it's, it's backward compatible. And uh, so with ACPT, now you have an image that is already tested for against uh, Python versions, against CUDA drivers and all of this. So you can, you know, you don't have to do the testing to make sure or figure out what package works with which other, what are the dependencies that I need to worry about. As well as we test these curated environments across uh, a lot of Microsoft 1P workloads. So one thing we try to do with Azure ML is that the goodness that you see in a lot of technologies that is out there, um, whether it's um, you know uh, uh, the Bing solution or any of the other things, uh, where 1P teams have tried, or cognitive service team, et cetera, where they've tried these um, environments and we've already tested them for security, compliance, and all of these things, that is then passed on to our um, to the larger community in the sense that you don't have to worry about these basics of getting things right and just use the image at hand right away and uh, and do more similarly like uh, pytorch 2.0 we also have uh, open source a deep learning optimization library called deepspeed that's included within AC, uh, acpt or azure container for pytorch um, with deepspeed you can get uh, training done about 10x faster for your models. Um, the cost is like 6x cheaper. It's again open source. Uh, <clears throat> and it provides excellent system throughput. It's an easy config to just apply to your training jobs with a couple of parameters. You can enable deep speed while using Azure Container for PyTorch. Onyx now, Onyx is again another collaboration we had. Um, it's a cross-platform machine learning model accelerator. Um, it's, it has a flexible in, interface uh, to integrate to hardware-specific libraries. You can use Onyx Runtime both for training and inference, um, and um, it is uh, available within the Azure container for PyTorch. And um, ORT, um, it's a pretty simple wrap. Like, if you want to use ORT module, um, it is instantiated from the Torch ORT backend in PyTorch. And it enables a seamless integration for Onyx runtime training in a PyTorch training code with minimal changes to your code. So with you know, uh, ORT module, you can wrap the module and just use it within the code. It's a simple uh, one line change. Um, and that can give you a pretty good um, improvement in your training time. We have seen up to 1.4x faster training with Onyx runtime for training. And similarly, the, you, you know, for inference, you can take that same model and you can convert it or you can import Onyx Runtime as ORT and create an inference session that then allows you to then deploy this model across um, a, a host of different hardwares um, as well as, um, you know, if you want to do it uh, on device or, or web, it, ORT uh, makes it much, much easier for you to do that. And we have seen um, our customers spanning a range of scenarios be able to use this. So, for example, we have um, Infarm, uh, which, is a, uh, which runs a computer vision on a tractor and uh, uses uh, Onyx Runtime. We, of course, Hugging Face has enabled it across a bunch of their scenarios uh, as well. Some of the results we see with Onyx Runtime. So, uh, on the right, uh, there is um, an example that was published by Optimum. So, Optimum integrates uh, the Onyx Runtime training through an ORT trainer API. And... Um, this trainer extends their transformer, and we've seen 
Um, that training time can reduce by can be reduced by more than 35% for many popular hugging face models. Um, and um, the performance uh, measurements here were done um, with Onyx runtime for training in the second run, and then Onyx runtime uh, plus deep speed uh, zero stage one in the final run. And all of these things are pretty much easy for you to do because with ACPT, given all of these packages are available in one place, you can compose uh, you know, your base PyTorch with ORT or your base PyTorch with deep speed and get these results faster. On the right, we have a recent performance analysis done with PyTorch 2.0 uh, with several hugging face models in both eager mode and compile mode. And what we see is that Torch compile improves upon several models. However, when we compose Torch compile with uh, uh, deep speed, the gain in throughput is even higher. And similarly, deep speed plus ORT provides gains for several model types. So this is an area where we continue to like improve and evaluate. Uh, but the key point is that these technologies don't work in isolation, but you can compose them to get even further gains and reduce the costs of running these models and reduce your training times even further. Also, we have um, introduced with the recent release of Azure Container for PyTorch, uh, a new technology called Nebula, which boosts checkpoint speeds uh, by up to 1,000 times. This is still in preview, um, and it is fully compatible with PyTorch. Um, it runs only on Azure ML, but again, Nebula can reduce uh, checkpoint times from hours to seconds, so you can um, save as much as you know, 95 to 99% of your training time if you use the simple checkpointing capability. So how do I use ACPT? Um, Azure ML is available both as a command line interface at SDK and um, UI. I'm showing you some snapshots of uh, the UI view. Um, if you go into the environments tab, you can see um, and search for uh, ACPT or, or PyTorch. You will see a list of uh, models. Um, and as you can see, they're available for various versions of PyTorch. Uh, sorry, not, uh, not models, but environments. And they're available for uh, various versions of PyTorch you can easily use a pre-existing curated environment for your jobs. Um, but what if I don't want to use a curated environment as it exists because I have these additional dependencies I'm building uh, or I'm training a whisper model and I have transformers and accelerators that I want to add on to a base image. Uh, we provide a capability of creating custom environment. You can start from a pre-existing a curated environment, and then you can add, uh, so the first line here is, is just a curated environment that exists, and then you can add and install additional pip dependencies uh, to create your own custom environment. And once this is saved, these curated and custom environments can be used across uh, your training jobs in Azure ML. So it's not like it's tied to that one instance. You can share it with your teams uh, as long as the workspace is shared. Then how do I um, use this along with some of the acceleration technologies I talked about earlier, like Onyx Runtime and Deep Speed? There's a simple um, argument that you've provided to your uh, training jobs. Uh, there's a capability to upload scripts or associate scripts with your job, and within that, you can provide the parameters. Some of the parameters are shown here. Uh, one is from the optimum integration that I talked about earlier and um, that just extends the trainer and transformer, so you can um, specify a parameter here and, and use that. Similarly, for deep speed integration, you can upload a JSON file for your training job, which has the configurations required, and it's a very simple and seamless integration. doesn't take a lot of steps um, with a couple of clicks and a few lines of code. You should be able to use uh, these technologies pretty efficiently within your training jobs. <clears throat> So now I have a model. What do I do with it, and how can I kind of uh, use it and, and, and make it easy for sharing? So once you have a model within, within your training job, you can register it um, within Azure ML. And once a model is registered, it, it, is, um, it can be shared within your teammates. Uh, you can deploy it, and you can create an online endpoint, uh, which, which can be tested within Azure ML, but also like you, know, you can call it through a REST API, et cetera. Um, but you can register the model as is in PyTorch, or even better, convert it to Onyx 
So that will give you the, the speed ups that I was talking about earlier. It can give up to 17x uh, reduction in your inference times. And you can also use it within, uh, with ORT in your inference sessions uh, to get the advantage of Onyx runtime uh, across your deployments. So switching gears a bit, uh, what we talked about earlier was how do I make it easier for, uh, for developing these, these models from uh, the, uh, the, the part of you know, uh, the steps required to train a model, but how do we do it mindfully to make sure that it's also as seamless for our developers and engineers and scientists to integrate and make responsible AI part of their workflows. So RAI was not a reactive approach for Microsoft. We have been very mindful and proactive in our approach when it comes to building products that empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. We started our REI journey around 2016. There is a Slate article from Satya Nadella which kind of spearheaded this, uh, this whole um, synergy within our organization. And since then, within Microsoft, we have adopted uh, various principles. Of, firstly, we defined these responsible AI principles. What does it mean? What do we need to do? And then we established standards around these REI principles. And then... Uh, built uh, products that not only, uh, or, or you know, practices within internally when we build models to make sure that these are uh, applied and used. So for example, when OpenAI gives us a new model, one of the teams that first gets their hand on, uh, on these models is the REI team within Microsoft. And then we also make sure that some of these learnings that we have as we build these models are available for developers to use as they are building their own models. And so we built uh, integration with Azure ML for RAI dashboards, and we keep uh, improving upon it as we learn and do more. So there are six um, basic RAI principles uh, that are the foundation of our RAI governance framework. These six principles serve as a guide for the development of AI technology. Now we take these six principles and we break them into multiple goals. And each goal has a series of requirement that sets out the procedural steps that must be taken uh, and mapped to the tools and practices that we have available. And multiple facets of implementation, including training, tools, and testing have been developed around these. <clears throat> these six principles, accountability, transparency, making sure that the models we build are fair, they are not bias towards one cohort. Um, they are reliable and safe. They do not introduce vulner vulnerabilities. Um, they, they comply by privacy and security standards, and they are inclusive. So these six pillars are <coughs> built across um, uh, and molded in our enterprise risk management framework and um, ensure the operationalization of responsible AI at Microsoft. We've already made some of our early work available as open source toolkits like Counterfeit, EconML, and Hacks Toolkit. And we continue to now integrate that more and more within uh, Azure ML. So one of our uh, toolbox's newest addition is Responsible AI Mitigations Library, which you can look up. And um, there's also Responsible AI Tracker, which helps visualize. So what are the steps required as, you, as we as developers go through our training cycle? Firstly, we need to identify um, you know, where our models might not be doing uh, things as intended. So you know, if we can specify and identify cohorts which have a high error rate, while our overall model might be accurate, it might not be working well in predictions you know, uh, in a fair way for a specific cohort, like for job applications or for uh, um, scenarios like giving loans or housing, et cetera. So how do we figure out? So there's error analysis tools and fairness assessment tools that are uh, embedded within the REI uh, framework. And it's, it's a single pane approach that, which makes it much, much easier for uh, developers to test these out and pick cohort, et cetera, um, and, and, and do the analysis. Once you've identified uh, these um, issues, you need di like, you know, diagnostic capabilities and mitigation capabilities. Uh, we provide model interpretability and counterfactual analysis 
uh, enabled within REI dashboard, as well as certain mitigation uh, steps. And then you then <clears throat> need to make a decision to uh, address these. Uh, you can understand like, you know, the causal impact of your features or do counter counterfactual analysis, improve your model and then compare so that the, the issues that we identified earlier are, are they being, uh, are they still occurring or not? So the cyclical approach can help make sure that you, know, you are improving your models and making sure that your models are being fair and doing the right thing. So like I mentioned earlier, there, there are this, um, these pillars of um, responsible development, like fairness and explainability. Um, there's automated pipelines, workflows, like a YAML-powered CLI experience that you can use. You can also customize which components to utilize to tailor to your unique needs and scenarios. And there's also a no-code experience offering users um, an end-to-end -end experience to generate their responsible AI dashboard. And um, once you have run all of this analysis and you want to make sure that you're able to share that with uh, both the technical and non-technical um, you know, business stakeholders, there is an easy way of creating a PDF scorecard that ensures that everyone is on the same page when deploying your AI systems. Um, it's a single pane of glass experience, uh, which brings together a robust set of responsible AI tools, including the already previewed uh, model explanation and fairness metric. Okay, I think I spoke too fast, but uh, that brings me to the end of my slide. If you wanna know more, and these advancements that I talked about are, are some of it, uh, there's much more that's coming up. So there's Microsoft Build, May 23rd to 25th. You can know about new practices in REI. You can learn more about what's happening with ACPT or, or attend labs. These are some of the sessions. Please do sign in. And thank you, PyTorch, and lovely to be part of this community. We'll do more together. Thank you.